Now there's a number, a number of different type of grants and scholarships you can receive from the federal government. One of the major programs we like to emphasize is the Pell Grant. Now the Pell Grant is a need-based grant that you get from the federal government, of course, but you have to show that you have the financial need for it. So it's a grant and the grants, unlike loans, do not have to be paid back. So it's great free money for you guys to go out there and get. When you actually fill out your FAFSA, which is the free application for federal student aid, through the FAFSA, we're able to determine what we call an EFC score. That just stands for Estimated Family Contribution. And it basically bases how much your parents make, the number of people in your household, if you have anybody else in your household that actually is in college, they're able to come up with what we call the EFC score. So if your EFC score falls within a certain range, you automatically show financial need and you can become eligible for the Pell Grant. Now, last year with the 1718 award, you're looking at around the upwards of $5,000 you can get from the Pell Grant. So it's an awesome opportunity to earn some free money. Like I said, the application you need to fill out to actually qualify is the free application for federal student aid, also known as the FAFSA. So don't ever forget that. Free application for federal student aid, October 1. Can't say it enough. FSEOG stands for the Federal Supplemental Educational Opportunity Grant. And what that is, is another grant from the federal government, which does not have to be repaid because it is a grant, but students have to show extreme need, even greater need than what you would see from the Pell Grants. The FSEOG is administered directly through the school, and not all schools necessarily participate in the program. So what I would encourage each student to do is when you're actually applying for these schools and even come to the point of getting your award packages, make sure you contact the financial aid office to find out if they even participate. Now when it comes to loans with the federal government, there are a multitude of different types of loans you can take up. There's a federal Perkins loan, the Direct Plus loan, you have your subsidized versus unsubsidized loans. Basically loans are money that you borrow from the federal government that you agree to pay back plus interest. And interest is just money stacked on top of the original amount that you borrow. So when you agree to take out that loan, you are agreeing to pay it back plus interest. So it is different from a grant in that way. Now, when you talk about federal or subsidized versus unsubsidized loan, this is a little different. Subsidized loans are a little more student friendly. There's a stipulation where the federal government will pay the interest that is accrued while you're in school. Also, after you leave school, you get a six month grace period before you have to make any repayments. But then you also have unsubsidized loans, which is a little bit different because you do have to pay on the interest while you're in school. Each year when the interest rate is applied, you have to pay that amount, of back, that amount back, plus the total amount that you borrowed as well. So keep that in mind when you're looking at your award package as well, that there is a difference between subsidized and unsubsidized. One, you don't have to pay the interest back while you're in school, the other you do. Now, when you talk about your PLUS loan, PLUS loan is usually for your graduate students or the parents of undergraduate students. You are borrowing directly from the federal government. You have to pay while the student is enrolled in school, so there's no grace period of wait time. But it is an additional option for students who may be offered a certain amount of money and it may not really meet the financial need that you have. Parents can go in and take out a PLUS loan and hopefully cover some of that cost as well. Now Perkins loans are what we call low interest loans. It's similar to FSEOG grant that you have to have a great financial need and once again that's determined through the information you put in your FAFSA. Now this is going to be offered through the school directly so they determine the exact amount you can borrow based off the cost of attendance and your financial need but if it is necessary that you need money to cover costs this is another option you have as well. Now, what, one thing I would suggest with anybody applying for loans is you're going to be offered a maximum amount most times. My advice to parents and students is to take out the amount that you need, not based off the max amount that they offer you. Guys, I had to take out a loan. I went to UT and I had to take out a loan and I am still paying back on that loan, loan plus the interest that accrued. So keep that in mind. So for those of you who are nervous, who, you know, have never done this before, of course, because you're in high school, why would you ever have to have to take out a loan, you know? But when you do, just remember that there are different types of loans out there and some may be better than others for your specific situation. What I would say is don't panic. Realize that this is all a part of the process. You're learning just like I learned as I went to school. But do make smart financial decisions. And if you do have a financial need and you feel like you can't pay to go to college, there are means for you to get there other ways. Federal government is one effort, one way, and we'll talk about some state programs in the next video that will show you some other ways you can pay for school as well. 